Right, here I am at um, Park in Lightcliffe. Um, Rebooked the rental car. Just um, a bit touristy, I suppose. Having a look around Darwin. Because uh, I can't check into my Airbnb until um, 3 o'clock. So it's not for another three hours. And then I just got a call from the cab company to say, hey, um, uh, we're so sorry, but... Uh, Dundee Beach is out of our range, so we have to go negotiate with a driver. And you were quoted at 200, but it's uh, US uh, Australian dollars, but it's actually going to cost 300 because they've got a return as well. Like I just drove a, a hybrid car out there, it cost 27 dollars uh, Australian do uh, dollars in gas. So they're really taking taking the Mickey. It's more about how much they lose, you know, from other potential jobs. That, you know. Um, in the hour and a half at the messing around getting back to Darwin City so it's more about that so I gotta find maybe I'll try and find an uber who will do it for me um, it's just it's, it's a real problem there's there's no buses that go out there um, the taxis don't want to go out there obviously and if they do it's going to be 300 one way 300 Australian dollars one way uh, and then I'm stuck there for three weeks so because my car is deregistered because it's been three years and it has a busted CV joint in here so I shouldn't be driving it at all I should be getting it repaired yeah it's just it's just the freaking logistics man all they need is like a shuttle bus or some sort of tourist bus or something out there just some kind of bus out there it's just this is just stupid there's nothing there's no way to get out there unless you hire a vehicle and you're not lots but even allowed to drive out there with a hired vehicle so uh, or you negotiate with the um, with the taxis and uber drivers and if you're lucky if you're lucky you'll find somebody who will take you out there so thankfully it's a little overcast today because it's been stuff I've been doing has been pretty sweaty and hot but <clears throat> On the upside, I uh, managed to break in to my main life support container and the aircon is working. It's pretty noisy so I'm going to have to check to see there might be some bugs or something that have uh, managed to get themselves, uh, maybe some paper moths have tried to build the nests inside. But, um, but that was huge. That's a huge plus so um, the problem with the water I've you know, got the water going I can see that there's some problems with the water tank I think I might have been struck by lightning or something so excuse me so I may have actually had a small fire looks like I, I did have a fire something's all right, because the, the, there was a plastic container here before and it's completely gone. So that caught on fire and it's completely melted away. And when it burnt, it shot right up here. And um, fortunately, this is all metal, so it didn't burn. But what it did do is it melted the hoses here. <laughs> um, and it's like it's blocked up so all of these hoses need to be replaced and unfortunately that includes the hoses um, that go in, inside the bathroom so I'm going to have to sort that out uh, I can work around that in the meantime so that's not a problem I'm just going to be camping here and if I can get into the other container I can um, See, my, my old man, he was he was a kitchen installer, kitchen and bathrooms installer, so he's probably got a lot of these pipes still around. I think that this pipe joins around the corner. I may even be able to jury rig some kind of um, hose to it somehow, um, just so I can get wood pressure. You can see here, look at this. So uh, I think this got struck by lightning. Or this this started to melt. It got hit by the flames. So <laughs> there was a fire here. So I'm lucky that there's anything left here at all. And yep, that looks like 
All right, so that's the back hose that goes to the cistern, to the toilet. As you can see on the back of the container there, sorry my shaky hands, eyebrow hands. Oh, God. There you go. Can't zoom, but uh, you can see there is the pipe, well, where the pipes are supposed to connect, that sort of black mark. So, yeah. So... Um, things have been definitely happening since I've been away. I've, yeah, it's definitely melted there. So the fire would have, yeah, kept on going there. So I've got to connect the hose there and that'll get the cistern refilling again. And uh, I think I may have to replace the cistern anyhow. So I'm feeling a bit more confident now because I've got my steel cap boots on. Um, oh, this flies. I've just got to try and get into my other container because that's where the lawnmower is and uh, a lot of my tools. But if I can get into there, I can tidy things up quite a bit. Got some green ants wandering around there on that hole. So one of these trees, there'll be a green ants nest, which has to be dealt to. So I'm just sort of trying to be careful not to encroach in their territory. So I got the um, car going. I moved it out from where it was. It's filthy, full of mould. I don't really want to drive it at the moment until I give it a good wash. And I'm um, feeling pretty stuffed already from doing all that. Just standing with this fan. But the pluses are one, power. The aircon is noisy, but it's going. I'll give it a clean, hopefully. If I pop open that cover, I'll probably see some uh, paper wasp nests or something like that that are, that are causing the noise so it'll be an easy fix and there was cool air coming through it so that means that there's no actual problem with the air con itself I think um, or at least it's working at the moment but if I run it without cleaning it that may not be the case for long um, but I did get the water pump going so the water pump's still working which is a miracle considering that, that like that whole area would have been on fire um, Yeah, so the fire actually looks like it's spread quite a ways. So it's fortunately, like I say, fortunately for me, this, this whole area is all metal, including the bathroom toilet area. So if I have a look in here. So the fire didn't actually come into here at all. But this system, that's fucked. I'm going to have to replace the system. It's disgusting anyhow. I've, I've got a replacement toilet seat. The actual toilet should be fine. But the system is fucked. So, I'm not going to be able to get any joy um, from the shower head in here. And the shower head in the, out there is poked as well. Until I replace those cables. And obviously it's a big mess in here and it all needs to be tidy up. So that's the other thing I need to do. Excuse me. So, I think I can call it a bit of a day. And consider myself lucky that the whole place didn't go up in flames when that fire hit. And it's, again, it's most likely that, uh, that it got struck by lightning or something like that from the looks of it. So, because it was a fairly isolated fire strike. And then the other ups, upside is that I'm testing this on the Tesla SIM card. And it looks like I've got 4G connectivity out here, which means I'll still be able to communicate with everybody. If I get stuck in a pickle, I can call for help and um, get the hell out of Dodge if I need to, and also book a taxi if I need to, um, which I'm trying not to do. So I might just leave, be riding rentals. But we'll see how we go. I've rebooked the, the rental till Friday. Locked everything up. Let's switch off the fans and the lights for now. That's the one that's the fan over here. And go back to my accommodation. Maybe enjoy some of the luxuries of a hot shower and all that kind of stuff that I can for now. Um, 
until I can figure out a way to break into that con that other container. I can't break the lock. I can't <laughs> can't find the keys and I can't break the lock. It's just so frustrating. Um, but it is what it is for now. And hey, there's a lot of pluses. And again, very, very lucky that the whole place didn't go up in flames when that lightning stri strike happened. Like I say, I'm pretty sure that's what would have happened. This, this place gets pretty stormy during the wet season. Lightning strikes do happen. Uh, maybe it happened during the wet season, so that's the reason why the fire didn't spread very far. But yeah. <laughs> it's the territories, baby! Okay, here we are in uh, sunny Dundee Beach. So, probably the first mission today is to get the lawnmower started. Um, I had a bit of a stressful day yesterday. It was pretty stressful. The lawnmower wouldn't start, the car wouldn't start. Um, and, you know, I because I, I'm stuck here now, I, I got really bothered by how dirty everything is like everything just needs a, a thorough clean but fortunately I bought three buckets now there was a purpose for that two buckets are for a composting toilet because I need a substitute toilet while I'm here and I built a little composting toilet really really simple design um, because I bought a toilet seat the other day but there's no point of putting a toilet seat on that just you know destroyed toilet um, so Essentially composting toilet, all you need to do is put some sand and maybe some sawdust or in my case it's probably going to be leaves. So the, 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 the soil here is very sandy so if I just dig up a little bit of the soil here and make sure there's no nasties in it, um, like bugs that might bite me on the bum, <laughs> um, I can create a very simple composting toilet. Um, well I have created a very simple composting toilet and that will be perfect for the, the duration um, and I can just dig a hole and put it in there and it'll actually compost away nicely and um, add to the organic matter of the soil without being toxic in any way. So that's one thing, composting toilet. Very basic off the grid kind of technology. The other thing I did was I rigged up a shower because obviously the shower um, is out of commission at the moment because of the broken hoses, the shower's working fine, but I do have to make sure that those broken hoses aren't leaking water, because I did notice that they were. At the moment, I've just literally blocked them with some twigs and some electrical tape, so that they're just not pouring water out whenever I have the water switched on. But I kind of want to have, I don't want to have to fuss around and <clears throat> switch the water on and off. I'd rather just flick the pump, which is an easy switch on the wall, and have that tap open all the time. But the first plan is to get that lawnmower going because I had to bring the the rental down again with that overgrown um, driveway and I, I hate doing that. So let's try and get the lawnmower going. I don't know if I'm going to have much hope, um, but we'll see. It did, did fire up. There's a good chance that it's just simply the spark plug. So I'll try and take the spark plug, plug out, give it a bit of a clean, make sure that it's got a good gap on it. Hopefully... Uh, I've got some the right tools here to check the gap. I don't know if I do, but I can check it by eye, basically, and uh, we'll see if I've got got some sandpaper or something floating around that I can clean those points with. Okay, so spark plug is here. Spark plug holder. It's really difficult to access because this in the way. I put my hand now. Yeah. Thank goodness for that. So you can see how charred and caked on that is. I have to clean that. There's no point gap left. There's no gap there at all. So if there's no gap, it's not going to spark. If it's not going to spark, the motor's not going to start. So if I clean that, I've got a very good chance of getting that lawnmower going. Here's our dirty spark plug with uh, no point gap at the moment. Um, I'm just going to start with this wire brush and just get what I can off first. It does have a large gap, but I don't know what the gap size is supposed to be. And I don't have the right tools to check that. Well, maybe I do. That they'll be somewhere in my 
tool area, but that that alone might might be enough to get it going. And then the other thing to do is I've got a little bit of sandpaper, and you just kind of sand those surfaces that need just to spark a little bit like that. Okay, so the next thing I can I can check with this lawnmower to make sure it's going um, to, to find, figure out why it's not starting is drain the fuel out. See, the fuel has been blocked by the crap that's in there. So, so this is what I expect. So I don't think it's the spark plug. It won't stay started. Okay, so there's one more thing I need to do to try and sort things out. And that is, I can take the carburetor off. I've just drained the fuel out again. I noticed there was a bit more crap in the fuel. Um, but this is, this will be the ideal way of making sure, that, that making sure there's no stale fuel or old fuel that's getting sucked up into the motor or just not getting into the motor. T from this end. Lefty Lucy. Doesn't want to come off. There it is. So, there's some pretty. The oil that just came out of there is pretty yellow and stale. So, this is the carburetor here. Some mold stale yellow fuel still in it, um, which could be my main problem. Anyhow, you can see the problem. I've got petrol in my mouth now. So you can see my problem. Um, it could, there could be a fuel line problem as well. I haven't um, checked the fuel line. If I take the fuel line off, it's just going to piss all of the petrol out that I put in it the other day. And I don't really want to do that. Yeah, I don't. I really don't know anything that much about lawn mowers to tell, to tell the truth. I particularly hate pull start mowers because I'm physically disabled. But I'm desperate to clear that driveway because right now I'm kind of trapped on the property while I don't want to take either, I don't want to take the rental car back up the driveway until it's cleared because I don't want to risk damaging the rental car. So the only other option is to try and start a bushwhack and when I tried to start bushwhack yesterday um, she wouldn't turn over either. So that's the station wagon. I named the lawnmower Chewy and the station wagon bushwhack so I hope they come to life because otherwise I'm going to be disposing of their bodies. So yeah, as uh, you could tell, it wasn't even trying to turn over. Yesterday it was turning over better than it is tonight, so 
it's um it's kind of a mystery there's a lot of ants out there and they look pretty nasty i'm not sure they might be meat ants or something so that means i'm gonna have to put on the heavy sweaty work boots and some long pants and probably my gaiters if i don't want to get them crawling up my legs and um and biting me uh, and the last thing i want on top of everything else is to be struggling with ant bites so that's where i'm at um things haven't been going that great at all but i'm just trying to come up with solutions so this is a real low-tech composting toilet attached at the back with a couple of cable ties opens up like that you can sit on it like a normal toilet do your business and ideally what i need to do is i need to put some sand and some sawdust in there that will help make it you know much less gross and also every time you use the toilet you need to put sand over the top and sawdust over the top but then once i've done my business i've designed it in such a way as that you can just literally pull this off take the bucket and empty it so it's really low tech and really simple and the other thing is because i was worried that you know because this toilet isn't quite low to the ground i have a solution for that as well i just haven't um, done it yet if i cut the same hole as i did on the first crate on one of the spare crates that i've got and there's a lot of them so if i cut this off as i have with this then this will stack on nicely like this it's actually pretty comfortable that way i can sit up a bit higher if i need to and uh, use the toilet keeps my feet off the ground so i don't have to worry about ants or anything coming and biting my feet i'm pretty sure i can cut a hole in the top of the other one and um and then i've got a really simple composting toilet and it's not much less sophisticated than any of the more expensive ones that you might buy i've taken my aircon apart up here because it was dripping water and what's happening is there's a blocked outlet hose um, on this side and that's supposed to just push the water out through the hose and outside but instead it was dripping out the, out the front of the aircon and um, almost hitting my my bed there one of the smarter things i did on my first trip is i bought this and um, you just pour a bit of water in the top of it and push on and boom beautiful cool air so i used that last night because the normal air cans aren't working and this did the trick it's about 30 degrees here but um this has got nice cool air that's coming out of it it's brand new so this last night was the first time i ever, ever used it i didn't use it the last trip because i was using the air cons but at a crunch i just use this portable air cooler and i'll be okay and i won't overheat this is my solution to um, the fact that when i'm in the containers it's the same as when i'm at home um, i can't get a reception um because it's the metal containers so but i found that if i put the cell phone up here like this um and make it a mobile hotspot i can still get internet so this is one work around so that I've got a constant 4G internet connection for all of my devices on the property.